In 1929, as we all know, the stock market crashed and totally devastated the American economy. And by 1933, 13 million Americans were homeless, were jobless. Um, and FDR uh, enacted the New Deal, which was a set of government programs that were trying to create a decent standard of living for like all members of society, including artists. And kind of amazingly, including artists, because they made up such a not only were they maybe kind of a marginalized part of the American workforce, but they were also a really small percentage of it. It worked in a bunch of different ways. There were a number of different um, uh, kinds of relationships that working artists could have to the WPA. They obviously didn't only sponsor visual artists, they also sponsored playwrights and writers and musicians and um, uh, just any, any, any any part of the arts. So they would give the artist uh, materials and a working wage, but in exchange, the artist would pretty much hand over all the art they were making. And then the government would redistribute that art to, uh, to, to public institutions like libraries and schools, museums, post offices. In fact, the Portland Art Museum has 400 pieces of art that uh, were, were WPA sponsored. Something about that so something about that that background has like kind of primed me to love WPA art, to love kind of the social realist style, and certainly made me love this painting. It's called Homesteaders. It's by Arthur Runquist, and I think you know the most obvious explanation for it is um, it seemed to me like something I would draw. You know, I mean, I'm I'm sure artists choose all kinds of different pieces, but on some level we're mostly probably choosing something that we wish we made, you know? And I saw it and I thought, oh, I wish I made that. He was a farm boy. He had uh, a younger brother, Albert, born in 1894, and they were inseparable. He was also an artist and they were, um, they were just, uh, did all things together. They had a lot of joint shows. They worked collaboratively on a lot of art and they uh, had a lot of jobs together. and. Um, they were really kind of partners in life. He studied and taught at the University of Oregon. He then went to New York, which a lot of Western artists did at the time, and studied at the Art Students League, and came back and studied at the Museum Art School here in Portland, which is now PNCA. And he did two WPA murals, one at the University of Oregon Library and one at a high school in Pendleton. I like the composition of it a lot. I feel like it's... There's something, it's, it's really cluttered, and I think as an artist, a lot of what I try to do is clutter a composition while somehow maintaining some sense of like orderliness in it. And I think that there's so many people and things happening in here, but it is really orderly. There's a lot of space between the people. They're all doing something. They're all somewhere for a reason. They're all uh, different distances from the viewer. And the, the narrative is very orderly too. Like it's, it's telling us, it's very functional. It's sort of telling us how to do something. You know, this guy's chopping down a tree, and then here's a chopped down tree with these big chunks of wood taken out of it. And this guy's um, splitting shingles, and she's stacking them. And then I guess she must be moving them on this little sled thing over to this guy who's climbing a ladder and putting them onto the roof. There's a lot of really interesting choices made in here. I mean, uh, like the plants, a lot of them are really flat. This bush is just like, he starts to put a little detail in here, but mostly these are just like plain of color, plain of color, plain of color. And the plants are funny, like it's not the way we think of, the, of a really lush Oregon forest. It's like there's a fern and there's a lily and there's this one weird kind of giant bulb that's coming out of the ground. It's, it's really simple, it's commonplace. Um, it's just like a, a scene from, you know, 150 years ago, but it really appeals to me, and I, I think as an artist, I'm so interested in historical scenes, both because they're romantic and also just because they're a glimpse into the past, and this one really is. Like, the things that I'm drawn to in it are his tools, that mallet and the thing that he's using to split the shingles, this sled that she's, shack she's stacking them on. Like, I'm assuming I always do and I always want to assume that they're researched and that that's what things really looked like. And, seems really unsentimental to me. The faces of the, of the people in it are, I, you know, they're, 
they're kind of stayed, but then they're sort of sad at the same time too, and they're also deeply in their own world. And I think that that's something that I feel like I'm always accidentally or purposefully doing in my art too, is um, I have a lot of pe people will be together in a composition, but not really interacting or, um, it, it, it's not like the interaction between the subjects that's creating any kind of emotion or sentimentality or romanticism. It's sort of more the setting they're in. And this one especially, it has this uh, really looming sky, these clouds that are rolling in. And I don't know if the clouds are rolling in and covering up that blue sky or if they're rolling away and that blue sky is opening. Like when I first looked at it, I thought maybe it was something about um, saying something about the depression and, you know, that there might be like, um, uh, good weather ahead, you know, for America. But now there's something really ominous about it. I feel like they're racing to finish this house before the crazy Oregon weather sets in. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it especially feels appropriate now that we're all, you know, getting our last days of good weather in before the rain just starts and doesn't stop. But I think there's so much, it's, it's such a staid piece. It seems so simple, but there's so much drama in it. 